Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So, you probably know the feeling that you realize there's something wrong with your mix and you try to fix that problem, you throw a plugin on there, but no matter what you do, no matter what kind of settings you dial in, you just don't get it right. When that happens to you, it's often worth just taking a step back and reflecting, am I even using the right plugin in the first place? And for that, I have three examples today that are hopefully going to be instructive. So in my first example here, I've actually duplicated the same track two times to show you how I could treat it with two different plugins. And you'll see the difference between the two and the results that we're getting, which is going to be very drastic. In this first example, I was trying to get a bit more high end into this dull sounding drum loop. Take a listen. Right, it sounds very dark. And so the natural first reaction would be to go to Studio One's effects browser that you find here on the right, if you click on browser, and then scroll down until you find the Pro EQ, for example, and then you just apply that onto the track. That's exactly what I've done in this case. So if you open that up, this is what it looks like. And I try to just get a treble boost going here by simply raising the high frequency shelf by actually more than nine decibels. Typically, you would expect that this results in a drastic increase in treble. So let's see what that does. This is without the equalizer. And now I'm going to turn it on. No equalizer. Equalizer. This EQ does almost nothing, right? It certainly does not increase the treble, the high frequency content of the sound by nine decibels. And if it does, then it's probably nine decibels above the noise floor. Not very useful. So why does that happen? I mean, the equalizer is literally supposed to raise high frequencies when I turn and boost the high frequency band, but nothing happens. Well, that is because in this drum loop, there's no actual high frequency content to begin with. The equalizer can only boost frequencies if they're already there. This is something I've already uh, shown you quite a bit in my saturation and distortion video. I'm going to link that here in the top corner for you if you want to uh, see that. But basically, whenever you're dealing with sounds that have frequencies missing, you cannot work with an equalizer to boost these frequencies. You have to create these from scratch. And for that purpose, you can use something like red light distortion. This is a saturation plugin that comes with Studio One. It's incredibly versatile. And that's what I've done here on the second track. So this is an identical copy. It's the same drum loop. The only difference is that on this copy, I'm now applying the red light distortion instead. So here again is the same drum loop without any plugin. Right now the distortion is not active. And watch what happens as I'm turning it on. Right? That's clear as day. So I could have tried for hours to move this equalizer, you know, to push all of the high and mid frequency bands, nothing would have happened because the content isn't there to begin with. And so it's really worth to take a step back at that moment and ask yourself, do I really need an equalizer here? Or am I requiring a different plugin such as red light distortion to begin with? In my second example today, I have a piano recording that I'd like to layer with a kick drum to turn it into a house production. Take a listen. Okay, you might be able to hear already that the piano is kind of quiet compared to the kick drum. So if I'm intending to make the piano the main instrument, then I might want to boost the volume a little bit. So naturally, I could try to boost the gain of this piano by, for example, applying a mix tool. This is one of the standard insert plugins that come with Studio One, has a very handy gain knob here and it also allows you to do some face correction here with these controls. Now, this would be a typical way to do this. So let's see if it solves our problem. So it really didn't solve anything here. In fact, it introduced two new problems. Uh, the first one is that 
the transients are now too loud, so like the note onset as the player is hitting the piano, that's way too loud, but the sustain is still too quiet, so I'm still somewhere in between, right? It's like too loud and too quiet at the same time. And also, suddenly we're clipping, right? As you can see with the red light down here, uh, we're really not achieving anything. Instead, whenever you're faced with the issue of volume differences that are too large inside of an instrument or within that instrument, you should use a compressor or a limiter instead that does a much better job at raising the gain while not introducing any clipping. And so in this case, I just went ahead and used the limiter that comes in Studio One instead and check out what this does. That's just as loud pretty much and it didn't introduce any clipping whatsoever into our arrangement. So you might be wondering why did the limiter work so much better here than the mix tool when both raise the level? Well that is because limiters are not just raising the level but they're also taming the peaks meaning the loudest parts of the signal. Much like compressors, limiters are designed to raise the lower levels of a signal while keeping the peaks at the same level. So you're kind of raising everything to a higher average loudness while still keeping the same peak level. And this is exactly what you need whenever you're dealing with wildly dynamic signals. You might also know podcasts that are not professionally mixed, where you have to raise the volume when one person is speaking and lower the volume when the other person is speaking. Stuff like that can be solved very elegantly by using a limiter or compressor. If you want to learn more about compressors and limiters, I have some video tutorials on these. I'm going to link that in the top corner because I also didn't understand them at all when I started out with mixing and mastering. Now I do and hopefully I can share some of that knowledge with you. But let's talk about compressors again in my last example for today, which is the vocal. I have a rap vocal here and it has quite a few issues and doesn't really compete with that massive beat. The 808s are just crashing through and you can't really understand the lyrics. But take a listen yourself and see what the problem is. Right, so clearly this rap vocal doesn't have the energy to sit on top of the playback as it should in a professional production. So what can we do to tackle that? Well, many people in the first step would try something like an equalizer perhaps. Let's open up Pro EQ 3 here on this track and just apply a massive boost and it does seem to help at first. But if you pay attention to the beginning, when she says like, for a minute, let me catch my breath, there's like this huge loss of level that you can't really work against with an equalizer because an equalizer is just applying a boost at a certain frequency. It doesn't help when the volume is fading away like that. Stop for a minute, let me catch my breath. So what you have to use instead in this case is a compressor because again, much like the limiter, the compressor is designed to equalize volume differences, right? If you have something that's too much shifting between loud and quiet, just apply a compressor and it will get rid of the problem. In this case, you'll see that the compressor does a much better job than the equalizer to repair this vocal. Stop for a minute, let me catch my breath. Sweat dripping on my big old mess, put my hips to the desk when I dance like this, but I'm right. missing breath. What you bless with the best? That's like night and day. This vocal with a compressor on top can now really compete with the playback. So I could have spent hours really trying to dial in the equalizer and I could have thought maybe there's some kind of minor improvement, but I'm not really getting anywhere because it's not the right tool for the job. As soon as you use the right tool for the job, your mixing becomes so much easier. So knowing which plugin to use in which situation is really a key skill to master. Speaking of master, if you want to learn more about mixing and mastering, please check out our master classes on Studio One Plus, where Joe and I are really teaching you everything we know about music production, mixing and mastering to help you make your music sound like you've always imagined it to sound. What other mixing tips would you like to learn more about or what kind of tricks can you share with us that we could turn into a video someday? Please let us know in the comments and thank you for watching.